The leader is the underdog, University of Miami Hurricanes, leading favorite Nebraska, 17 to 14. Don Crickey with John Brody here at the Orange Bowl. John, it's interesting that Nebraska has had a dominance in time of possession, even though they're behind, they've had the ball over 20 minutes. Is the Miami defense going to get tired? Well, I think it does bring up the question. It's 20 minutes to 10 minutes in time of possession, and I think your defense has a much more strenuous time out there on the field than does the offense. It's a lot harder to rush the passer than block the man. It's an awful lot harder to chase a Mike Rogier than it is to be an offensive lineman and move around and do what you can. It's also an awful lot harder to play defense against a man running deep like an Irving Fryer. So when people say, hey, both teams are out there, it shouldn't affect either. Also keep in mind the fact that Nebraska has three deep, very strong personnel. As far as Miami's concerned, they have 20 outstanding players, but boy, they could be tired. Well, Nebraska brought 136 guys, so they're deep enough to go for two games. But right now, it's going to be interesting to see if the Nebraska Cornhuskers can stave off the Miami passing game, which opens so strong. There's been an interesting strategy change. Two Nebraska players are wearing the wrong jersey intentionally. That's really Dave Burke. Number two, McCashland, is on his jersey, but he's normally 33 Dave Burke. And uh, Mark McCashlin's wearing number 33. <laughs> well, let me tell you why they did it. Now. I'd like to hear it. All right, me. because what the, one of the keys for Miami when they started the ball game was the key number two. Dave McCashlin is the type that gets up on the line of scrimmage. He's a fellow that moves around. He blitzes from his safety position. When he does so, it was a key for the type of pattern that Kosar wanted to throw. Well, early, he didn't seem to have any problem. Whatever he was watching worked. You notice it took him a little time, but he made some fine plays out of plays that looked covered. Then later in the second quarter, the jerseys have stayed the same. The funny thing is, I think Kozar might have picked it up because Burke has a mustache and McCashlin doesn't. Now, uh, they haven't gone so far as to change their their appearance, so I I'm going to imagine that Bernie Kozar picked it up. Before the game, Fryer and Rogier changed their jerseys, but they switched back. Here's the kickoff to Miami. Reggie Sutton. With a penalty marker down, Reggie breaks her loose. It's a foot race, but it'll all come back. As two markers are down inside the Miami 20-yard line, a 32-yard return, but there may have been an illegal block on the part of the Hurricanes. Bernie Kosar with his quarterback coach, Mark Trussman. 178 yards throwing in the first half. And that, and that stat is, is a little bit misleading because those throws for a, were for a lot of yardage, 178 yards in length, and that's a good staff. That's a good half by any standards. We noticed this half that Miami didn't like to kick off. Nebraska had the ball enough, they felt, in the second quarter. Miami's plan was to <laughs> give it to Nebraska at the outset, though, and they did. Stopped the Huskers their first drive. Actually a blocked field goal, and then Miami went right down and scored. Coach Schnellenberger wants an explanation. Coaches always do, and they always lose. On well, I'll tell you, not all, they don't always lose, because they do get the attention of those officials, and somehow I think people who do kind of raise their voice on occasion when the ball goes against you get the best of it. Hurricane start off in the hole to start the third quarter. Kosa gives off to Keith Griffin. It fumbled the ball, and it might be it is Nebraska's ball. A great run by Keith Griffin, but Dave Burke, even though he's wearing McCashlin's jersey, is the man who came up with a free ball. I wonder if the NCAA would look into that. I mean, well, there's nothing right. in the rule book. We looked into it at halftime, down, and we can't find anything that would preclude someone from doing this. We've been calling Burke McCashlin the whole first half and vice versa. So you people at home, I hope you understand. Anyway, that was that was Burke who made, made the play. And here is Keith Griffin, who is an excellent one, but the Cornhuskers have the ball, and that's Rozier. Boy, he takes a pop from Reggie Sutton. And the Huskers go to the run, capitalizing on an early turnover here in the third quarter. Nebraska with a chance to take the lead if they can. Maybe they changed identities. He's going to go the rest of his life being Randy Mike McCash. Second down and ten. Reverse. Nope. Faked Irving Fryer. A big play. Look at the break up there down at the 11-yard line. We had two guys go to the moon for the ball. He can handle it. Here you go. Third down now. Nebraska needing a big play after getting the turnover. Swing pass. It goes out to Shaleen. 
Open field tackle, but the cut down is made short of a first down, so it brings up fourth down in Nebraska. But we'll see if they send out their field goal unit. I think they're going to. You know, a lot of times you go for it on fourth, but there's four yards to go, and they have not been effective when Miami has given up to stop the run. And, uh, well, they're going to have a go at a field goal and a tie. It's a whole lot better than being behind 17, I think, like Nebraska was in the first quarter. The last one didn't get airborne. That's right. I mean, that's the reason they only tried four coming into this game all season. This one did. Right on range and up and through it goes and all of a sudden Nebraska comes out quickly, capitalizes on a fumble by Miami and a field goal by Livingston ties the game at 17. So the Huskers will kick it off again in a moment when we return to the Orange Bowl. 71 Orange Bowl was the first of Bob Devaney's three consecutive wins of the now classic New Year's game and the first of Nebraska's back-to-back -back national championships. The Cornhuskers edged LSU 17-12 with a fourth-quarter score. Right now, under Coach Osborne, it's Nebraska 17 and Miami 17. And even though the third quarter's only less than two minutes old, Livingston's ready to kick off for a second time. A high spinning kick. Bentley running it back. Albert is a tough hombre, and he comes across the 20 to the 24-yard line. The night ball right now, the home team Miami, which really had this place rocking with its first quarter onslaught, is in a tie game, and Miami goes to the run on first down out to the 28-yard line. Reggie Sutton was shaken up a bit earlier. Second down and eight. Osar will be firing. are such difficult catches because you're, you're making it in between two defenders and take a look at it. Here comes Kosar. He throws, gets a little nudge, but when you're Eddie Brown, he knows he's going to get hit as soon as he catches the ball. We see Doug Burke hit him before he can get his feet on the ground. That's a tough way to hit. Kane offense, first and 10 at their 47. Albert Bentley on a draw. Albert Bentley hit once and twice and three expect the Canes to throw. They're getting a six-man pass rush. Mike Knox gets shielded off the play. Bentley's not going down until he picks up eight. Second down and two comes up for Miami. And the Hurricanes pick up the blitz. Kosar lost it out there and has his man Albert Bentley. Bentley's on the spirit. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WJHG TV, Channel 7, Panama City. Don Crookie with John Brody. Orange Bowl, 84, Miami. And Nebraska tied 17-17 early in the third quarter. Miami driving. They've not scored since the first quarter. Back to the run. They rip it open. Alonzo Highsmith, the 230 pounds ahead for yet another. Once you get that ball and get those linemen spread out a little bit, real good blocking from Bentley, his, his fullback, allows him to get through the point of attack when he does so. Rest. Right now, the Hurricanes moving it through the Nebraska defense as they did in the first quarter. First and ten. The defensive player of the year in Florida last year is a defensive player here at Columbus High School in Miami. Same high school that Don Shula's son quarterback last year, and they almost won the state championship or two years ago. And right now, Don, Sh John, the big guy on the sideline says, keep it coming, and he sends a play in, and it looks like Kosar's looking to the end zone. Out flat pass he goes to... Alonzo Highsmith is going to keep going to number 30 as long as it keeps working. He did not throw to his backs much in the first half. He threw down the ground, but his backs are renowned for their ability to catch, catch passes coming out of the backfield. They're man-to-man -man on the linebackers. Kosar hits him right on the break. 
Nice to have backs that can both run the football and catch it, and he's got three in Highsmith, Griffin, and Bentley. For passes in an orange bowl was set by Namath in that 65 game. He threw 37 times. Rosar is probably going to go over 40 tonight. 9.55 to play, third quarter. Tie game. First down. End zone, man's open, and Shakespeare has the ball tipped away by Dave Burke. And a flag is thrown, Don. That is the... That was strict. That was just simply a motion penalty, and they, they refused it. I'm sure they would have taken a, a ten-yarder. Fast Eddie Brown, number 40, at the top of your screen on the left flank. Shakespeare off to the right. Right end, Dennison. He's always a man they like to go to down close. Here's a throw. Penalty marker in the end zone against Nebraska. Coach Osborne says no, but the official says yes, it'll be first and goal down at the one. Dave Burke calls for the foul. Well, at least we think it's Dave Burke. We haven't been able to see a look on his face. It's either he or McCashlin. We mentioned before they had switched jerseys. He tries to make the only play he can. He's got no help from inside uh, by a linebacker. A close call. I couldn't tell from that view of whether or not he, he actually made contact before the ball hit. A very, very close call. Coach Osborne thought his guy was right there, but it's a first and goal again now for Miami. One yard line. Remember in the first quarter, the first touchdown on a similar play was a quick point blank range. First and goal from the one after a pass interference call. Over the top. Alonzo Highsmith. such a fine job of recruiting that he's using a few of them today. And that one just got the job done. We're going to watch that again in a moment. You that mounted remote camera. All right now, we're looking from the remote camera at the far end of the field. And here is Jeff Davis ready to try the point after which he hits up and gets that carom shot. It's all right if it counts, and it does, so it's all working right. But they talk about the two things you can't coach, speed and luck. And take a look from the back. You can see there's no one to meet him when he goes up, so he goes over. Oh. Alonzo Highsmith into the air and into the end zone, and Highsmith, freshman from Miami, just went over the top from a yard out to get the go-ahead touchdown as Miami... It has not scored since the first quarter. Now has taken a 24-17 lead. It's the goalpost camera with a sweeping view of the sold-out Orange Bowl. It's been a tough ticket. Well, it gives you a, it gives you a unique view, but when you get down close to the goal line, it gives you a very good view. You can you can see the hole. Now Miami ready to kick it off. Jeff Davis puts a boom into the ball. He's going to deliver it down to the two yards deep. Jeff Smith will bring it out. He knows what to do when he gets the ball. And Jeff Smith, uh, back up to Mike Rozier at I back for Nebraska, takes it out to the 29-yard line. And now Coach Osborne ready to send Turner Gill out with the play. Gill is a very quick-witted quarterback. They let him change up as much as he wants to, and Rosborn says, very honestly, when we come down to a play that's a decision time with a timeout, we usually go with what Gill wants. And he has six options run-wise, and he's generally, he looks at the defense every time he comes up to the line of scrimmage, and when they run the ball, a lot of the percentage is audible. And run it they're going to do, and Turner Gill calls his own number, and a big play is made by Miami. Jack Fernandez. Fitzpatrick. Boy, when a, when a nose tackle can slide along the line of scrimmage, get enough penetration to grab the quarterback, that's beyond his job. He's played, he played, he's played really superior football, Don, with an eight-week layoff. It's incredible. That's 
that's one thing about bowl games a lot of people tend to forget it's almost like a new season he's Miami hasn't played in eight weeks it's like the opening game fire quick pitch and they go to Irving Fryer he hasn't done a whole lot tonight but look out some pro scouts have him rated right the top player in the country, Irving Fryer. Well, those are little bitty throws that often gain him lots of yardage. That time, uh, Kenny Calhoun was standing right in his hair, and it only picked up four yards. That play is designed to go about, about 12. Let's see if they throw. Fryer came in averaging 20 yards a catch, averaging just over eight on four catches tonight. Gill on third down throws it short of a first down. Nebraska will have to punt. Now they, did they really drop it? They did. They had that touchdown, and now the defensive stand by the Hurricanes has again ignited the orange ball. That's that's to the that's to the credit of, of Howard Schnellenberger because when a coach can take a team who is who is desperately tired at the end of the half after having led 17 to nothing, you get the feeling that hey the strength is coming back. We even questioned it ourselves since coming out in the second half. They have been strong. You talked about momentum, John. It has certainly now swung back to Miami. Here's Eddie Brown fielding a punt on the run and fine special teams play by the Huskers. Knocked down at the 27. The final score is now in from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. For that, let's go to Len Berman in New York. Thank you, Don. Final seconds in the Sugar Bowl. Al Del Greco, 19-yard field goal. He makes it. Auburn squeaks by Michigan 9-7 to without scoring a touchdown. We'll go back to the Orange Bowl. Don and John right after these messages. Sugar Bowl, that third-ranked Auburn has defeated Michigan, but barely 9-7, to so I think, Jan, we can safely say if Miami wins, they've got a better-than-good shot of going to the top. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about that. That's just a very conservative estimate, and if they do win, they deserve to be on top. But to beat Nebraska, you've got to go to the final gun, and the Huskers really rip it open in the second half. Here's a home run ball. Eddie Brown is out there. He thought he was tripped, and the official now comes in with a late flag and says he was. He had to make a decision as to whether he could catch the ball or not. He was, it was definitely a, some sort of contact made about 20 yards down the field. It was a very late pattern. It was, it was, he was definitely beaten had he not, had he not touched him. And you'll see Eddie Brown going down, not quite able to get the ball. You'll see Burke standing around trying to get off the ground. He had taken a shot at, uh, at Eddie and uh, actually hit him. I think it's a good call. Steve Dans, our NBC statistician, shows that Kosar's thrown the ball a lot and he distributes it. Brown's caught three, Dennison's caught three, Shakespeare's caught three, Albert Bentley's caught three. This time they're going to run it. Albert Bentley gets the call. He's a tackle-breaking runner on first and 10. He gets across the 45-yard line of the Huskers and down to Nebraska's 42. There have been several impressive hurricanes tonight, Don, but I think number 16 stands right out amongst them. He's a big back win, 225 pounds. Boy, does he block. He hits that blitzer and makes him wish that he was back in Lincoln. It's another one. Here's a throw to Keith Griffin. And he's inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Bentley just kills guys on the pass block. Yes, he does. But you know what? It's really heads-up play by Bernie Kosar. This is the man he's supposed to be king. He was wearing number two. But here's McCashlin coming after Kosar. He sees him quickly. Bentley handles him. But he rolls to the right to make it a very easy block for Bentley. When he does so, he knows it's a blitz. He's got a one-on-one -on -one situation. Finds a way to get the ball to Griffin. He picks up a long gainer and a first down. What was it that Schnellenberger said about uh, about Griffin? If he'd been playing at, uh, at Nebraska, maybe he'd be a Heisman Trophy winner? Well, his brother Archie was twice at Ohio State. Archie's here for the game. Gave the invocation before it. Here's Keith Griffin again. Somebody lost a hat, but Keith Griffin keeps on going inside the 15-yard line. Wade Priner, number 85 in the game, concern himself right now because he's getting beaten at the line of scrimmage. The offensive line for the Hurricanes are taking it to the Cornhuskers, and those two backs are running the ball. They are running it. 
it with gusto and a big Nebraska defense. Now it's second down and six for Miami. Play whistle dead. Too much the time of that. You know, John, I thought you made an interesting observation. At halftime, we were talking among ourselves. You said that Kosar has fun playing football. And I think that's illustrated by his attitude towards the game. He said he wants to be a student first and foremost. He plans to be a lawyer. If he never plays after college, it wouldn't break his heart. He'd like to. But he always played football for fun. If it ever stopped being, he didn't want to play the game anymore. Doesn't look like it's ever going to stop being either. He's having fun right now, but here's a second and ten play. They go to the draw. Keith Griffin working hard, puts two arms on the ball as he came back and went with the head with a go-ahead touchdown. It's a critical time. Now, Jeff Davis is the man that got him into this bowl with a late with a last second field goal against Florida State. He's ready. He's to me, I don't think you'll see them throw a high-risk pass right now. They'll give Jeff a chance to kick a field goal if they can't find a back. End zone look at Kosar. A strike. Eddie Brown dives down to the seven-yard line. It looks like he might have enough for a first down. A third and ten play, and it appears that Miami got there. We talked about earlier, their offensive line and backs didn't make a didn't make a miscue for five games mentally. Look at it now. You think Bentley hasn't isn't geared into McCaslin? It doesn't matter what jersey number he's wearing. He better change again. <laughs> Eddie Brown makes the catch, but again Bentley picks up the blitz to give Kosar time to deliver. And now the ball's down. First and goal for leading Nebraska 24-17 with the national championship of college football on the line of this game. at all this half they've come to him in critical 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 third down situations also 40 uh, they're doing it we were talking earlier John under Schnellenberger Miami is rarely a loser on the home field they're 11 and 2 on national TV under Howard 
And even more impressive at the Orange Bowl. At 26 previous games, they've won 24 on the Schnellenberger era. And people talk all over town. You see, you see signs on buildings, and uh, it's been the most enthusiastic Orange Bowl I've attended. Unbelievable. This is your eighth. Hurricane warning, they call it. And here comes Mike Rozier turning the corner. Puts his head down. He will take on the tacklers. Right. I think most of the country can hear these fellas right now. It is loud in Miami right now. Last five carries, Rozier has gained only nine yards. break for the Cornhuskers. That was a very late flag. It was not thrown while the ball was in the air. You do not see it right now. This has been some football game, and it's got a long way to go. Kimball goes up, and they apparently rule that Rod Bellinger had a piece of him before the ball came in. Now that's all you coming so? back. I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll wait and see. Rod Kimball's had a member of his family in the last eight Orange Bowls. That's he had a brother that went to uh, Oklahoma. Scott, excuse me. He's got a lot of brothers. They've been playing here. <laughs> because I didn't see any fisticuffs. I didn't see any action after the play. But there was an official there, and uh, that can be penalized. Sometimes in the heat of battle, the wrong thing is said. And if he hears it, well, like then, it's 15 yards. Roger had some thoughts before the game, and let's listen to Mike, the Heisman Trophy winner. This is the real house of the Rosier family. As you notice, we have no breaking down boards on the windows. Dogs are running around. No shootouts, no gangs. It's a nice town, and I really love it there. I'm glad to be from Camden, too. Thank you, Mike. Mike uh, reacting to a story that on another network, apparently, they shot some scenes of Camden in an area other than where the Rozier family lives. You can see where all the Rogiers grew up as a real nice place, and it's a terrific family. Met them out at the Heisman Trophy dinner when Mike got the award. His brother Guy is also on the team. Sutton. We see him on the ground every once in a while, but when the play's on, he's he's live. You know, and I think really it's time if Nebraska's going to get back into this football game that their offensive line takes over because those are the fellas that have been, have been given a lot of credit all year long. They're losing at the line of scrimmage to a very strong Miami defense. And Miami John has throughout the season been stronger in the second half. Second and 15 play, he got back about 10 or 11, but it looked like for a moment he might go the distance. It also looks like he uh, has a little limp on his left leg. Listen, when a man like Sutton is sitting in the open field with Mike Rozier, you're not supposed to be to bring him down. The fact that he stopped him, stumbled him, made him fall out of bounds is an excellent defensive play. Excuse me. That is Kenny Calhoun that missed him originally. Now watch Reggie Sutton come up. He's sitting here with about seven yards either side. into open field. A first down and more as Gill comes inside the Miami 40-yard line and down to the 38. And they'll now 
out, check out the very valuable left ankle of Mike Rogier. An 11-yard gain on that carried by the Nebraska quarterback with three minutes left to play in the third quarter. It's been remarkable that a man like Rogier stays as healthy as he does throughout the season running the ball as much as he does. Well, that is true. Those great running backs are very durable. 5'10", 210 pounds, Nick Rogier. It's first and 10 now for the Huskers. Gill plays vacant. Eludes the rush for a moment. Throws on a run, and he loses his man incomplete at the 25-yard line. A great play by Turner Gill. Throw a fastball on the run and hit the ball right down, but Bonnie Ingebrigtsen, the tight end, couldn't hold on. Well, you see, the Miami defense did a fine job on the play, but uh, as <laughs> Howard Schnellenberger said, he said, you know, this fellow, when he doesn't throw, averages six, seven yards a carry when he goes back to throw and decides to run. He said he's only eight when he does throw, so we don't really care what he does. It's going to be a tough night. They're doing it pretty well so far. trying to keep his group pepped up. They make a big play trying to get back in the ball game. 14 points down. Let's take a look. Dean Steincooler, number 71. He leads Turner Gill out. Gives him a little time to make the option throw. When he does so, it's a beautiful timing play. Fumble, which I don't think anybody expected as Nebraska hasn't fumbled the ball all night. Very good tack play by Eddie Williams down there. The ball's coughed up, and an alert Miami defense falls on it. 35-yard run and the fumble. Coming off the field is Fred Robinson, who came up with a football, a senior defensive end from Miami, Florida. Coach Nellenberger doesn't have to go far to find good football players. And he's played very well. Stopping a touchdown, but there's a big problem now for Kosar and the Miami Hurricanes. Downfield he goes. Accepted by Nebraska. Dave Burke went up. And Eddie Brown. Here's when he's trying to catch it. He knows he's he's out positioned by Burke on this occasion. All he can do is grab Burke's arms. As you see, he grabbed his left elbow, and when contact was made, he pulled him down and kept him from being able to intercept. A very big play by Eddie Brown, but again, Miami goes now second and ten from the Hurricanes one yard line. Seven seconds to get it off. Albert Bentley, he did well to get to the line of scrimmage. These Huskers are looking for the ball. Actually, he couldn't lose too much. He's on the one-yard line already. 2.09 left to play, and the clock running in the drama builds already today. Third ranked and previously unbeaten Texas. Play so second ranked Texas going at the outset of the day. Was upset by Georgia. Auburn, the third ranked team, was two-point winner over Michigan in the Sugar Bowl. And right now, Miami ranked fourth in one poll and fifth in another, has a 14-point lead on top ranked and unbeaten Nebraska. Late in the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. Bentley puts his head down, but Mark Dom is there to stuff it. That was a third and ten play, and Miami has to punt the ball to the Huskers. You know, I think they're using their head. What he does is on first down, he try, he sees if we can't get a big play to get out of here. That's when I'll get some time to throw. But he's not taking any unnecessary, foolish risks by going back, throwing on third and ten, getting caught from see where Bernie Kosar has done anything but act like a, like a seasoned senior, and he's only in his first year. Right now, his teammate Rick Tootin ready to punt from the end zone. Nebraska sets up coverage. Tootin unloads. Irving Fryer has it. White shirts hold their lanes on punt coverage and make Fryer take it up the gut. And he returned it nine yards after a 41-yard punt. But Nebraska now pitch back goes to Jeff Smith. 
It can go, and Jeff Smith is ahead for a five-yard gain to the 31. I think an interesting statistic here might be to bring up that Miami is the team that on first down has averaged 8.8, and you get to see it on your screen. Nebraska, 3.6. That is not their style, and you must credit the Miami defensive down linemen and linebackers. They've played very well indeed, giving away a lot of size, but when it comes to the quickness factor, Miami's up there among the national leaders. They give up less than 10 points a game. Turner Gill looks, fires, and he has a strike. Scott Kimball turning off the flank and out, goes down to the 21, a nine-yard gain. It's a Nebraska first down. That'll do it for the third quarter, John Brody. championship we'll be back after these messages from your local station Mike Rozier and this could be the key play as he was hit on his left ankle you'll see him cut back Reggie Sutton catches him and Rozier the premier runner in the game has not been back since yes sir it's a big situation but let me tell you something they've scored Opponents have scored only 10 points against Miami all season long. Now, that is an amazing statistic, and they've got a 14-point lead. So it's an uphill battle indeed whether they have Mike Rozier or not. And without him, it's really steep. Up back, takes it straight ahead, Mark Shaleen. Interesting, John, that in three, ro in three orange balls, Mike Rozier's never been in the end zone, never scored a touchdown in this game. And in the second half tonight, after rushing for 138 yards in the first half, he had a total of minus two yards and three carries in the second half. Canes were looking for him. I think what you're seeing right now is a little change in philosophy as far as uh, Nebraska's concerned. They're throwing the ball more than they normally do. Second and nine. frustration should because Turner Gill thought for sure he had a touchdown he pulled the string on the throw just a little bit when he did so he had no play you take a look Scott Kimball's in perfect position the ball didn't have quite enough zip on it the Bellinger was right there the stop in Mike Rozier the great runner for the Cornhuskers who went out with an ankle injury has not returned trying to walk off that ankle injury was unable to Jeff Smith has been in at the eye back when Nebraska's had the ball can't do anything if you can't run I mean that's he's done he's made a very big contribution what's happening right now is that uh, uh, Miami is unexpectedly winning the battle at the line of scrimmage even though they're smaller they are indeed Bertolucci, Hamandiero, Sinclair, Ward, and Heffernan, the interior lineman for Miami. Kosar, play fake. Screen. Griffin catches the ball. And those Huskers are hitting tonight. A scoring recap of the 
the game. You remember that first drive of the Hurricanes that passed to Denison? It was 7 0. 45 yard field goal by Jeff Davis. Miami extended his lead to 10 0. Then another throw to Denison from Bernie Kosar. It was a surprising 17 0 shocker. Then the surprise play by the Huskers. The 11 guard around. And Nebraska was on the board. And again on a one yard dive by Turner Gill, making it a 17 14 game. The third quarter field goal by Nebraska tied it. Then the Hurricanes opened up. Highsmith, the rookie, went over the top to put them in front 24 17. Albert Bentley went seven yards for a touchdown. That's how it stands now 31 17, Miami. So Highsmith had it and lost it. He stops the clock with the incomplete pass at 11.58, and the Huskers will get it back now as the Hurricanes have to punt. Coach Alex has been playing this in the big league for 10 years. Well, I'm sure he has been going over it in his mind in the big leagues, and he'll be in them for quite a few more. He feel, he, you can tell some guys fit there. He's one of them. Got a long time to go at Miami, a freshman, actually a redshirt freshman. He's in his second year at school, but he was redshirted his freshman year. But as an athlete, he's a freshman. A line drive punt by Tootin. The Cornhuskers were able to recover it. That would have been tough to come back from a fumble by Irving Fryer, but a Nebraska teammate comes out with the ball. 47-yard punt, no return. Back after this. The shoe on Mike Rozier's left foot just came off. It's been diagnosed as a severely sprained left ankle. And you have to think at this point, it's unlikely he'll be back. Where are they now? Leon Hart, one of two linemen ever to win the Heisman. Big Leon out in Birmingham. John Hewitt, another Notre Damer, one in 64. Jeff Smith breaks it open for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Gets out across the 30 to the close to the 35. John has taken his bonus money from the Jets and has <laughs> parlayed it. Out in Tucson. Second down and about a foot now for Nebraska. Irving Fryer comes out in the right flank. He's not been hit deep yet. They're going to try it pretty soon, though. But he's been hit a lot. Oh, yeah. The first down as they go to tight end Marty Engebritsen, taping up Mike Rozier again. They're putting the try in anyway. You'd like to be able to go to your Heisman Trophy winner if uh, when, the, when the game gets late and you're two touchdowns back, uh, he could insert some sort of uh, adrenaline, but I don't think it's their problem right now. Both of the backs that have replaced him, Jeff Smith and uh, Paul Miles, they both run very well. It's at the line of scrimmage. Texas fell on it, but there's a loss on the play for the Huskers, and the clock runs down to 11 minutes to play. Seems to be the way it's gone. All night long, just when something looks like it, it'll break, we, we flub a hand off. If we make a big run, somebody causes us to fumble. It hasn't gone their way, and a lot of that is because the Miami Hurricanes have played very opportunistic, aggressive defense. Ricky Simmons goes to the sidelines. Miami was so prepared coming in. Rod Bellinger is taking some licks. Boy, he's passed them out. Right now, he's helped off again. Lucius Delegal goes in to replace him, number 47. The freshman, Reggie Sutton, is up against Irving Fryer on the right play. Over the middle, they go. Todd Frame catches the ball. It's a Nebraska first down up to the 49-yard line. A 15-yard gain on the play. They've done very well at using very few seconds on the clock, moving the ball some 35 to 40 yards down the field in some minute or, or less than a minute. The receivers have been able to get out of bounds after they've caught the ball. But remember, when Nebraska gets behind, they don't have a lot of drop-back passes. They have that play-action stuff that isn't really too effective when it's second and nine, third and ten, and everybody knows you're going to throw. They go to the run. They go to the quick hitter to the fullback, Shalane. 
Mark Shalene gets across midfield down to the 47-yard line. On a first down carry, got about three. Jay Brophy made the tackle for Miami. Well, you can't say enough for the defensive play of Jay Brophy, uh, Tony Fitzpatrick, Fagan, you name it. All those fellows are standing people up at the line of scrimmage, and that's a great football team they're playing. Good take by Gill. Looks long, guns it. The pass is complete downfield of the 36-yard line. Scott Kimball coming back at the ball. Very well-thrown ball and a well-run pattern. Good for 12 yards and a first down for the Huskers. Not, I don't think they have enough time to be fiddling around running into the line right now. I know that's their that's their uh, their pattern, and they've, they've always done so, and that's part of the reason I think they get in trouble when they get too far behind. Of course, they haven't done it <laughs> all year long. Uh, yeah, the catch-up offense has not been part of their repertoire. That's right. They don't. I bet they don't practice it much. But they have been in two tight games that have gone down to the final play in the end zone. The Oklahoma State game, they won 14 to 10, did Nebraska. And after that one time, Osborne said, at least they can't accuse us of running up the score in this one. <laughs> and a couple of pass breakups against the Sooners of Oklahoma. By cornerback Neil Harris saved that game, 28-21, Nebraska won. Jeff Smith breaks it open, and Jeff Smith rockets down to the 22-yard line. And it is a first down and a 15-yard gain. So much for my viewpoint. I start talking about how they have to throw it. Okay, take a look. Dean Stein, Killer, Raritan, the two real big, all big eight, all American, all everything linemen come out and do a fine job, give their running back a chance to run. Jeff Smith's doing the job when called upon. Miami doesn't shy away from big teams. Notre Dame came in with a front line as big as Nebraska's, and Miami shut out the fighting hours here in the Orange Bowl 20 to nothing this year. It down to the 20 yard line. You were talking, John, about the enthusiasm. Really, the emotion of this whole metropolitan area rides with the Hurricanes tonight. The Miami football has been down until the Howard Schnellenberger era. He's brought it back, and tonight it could hit the pinnacle. Yes, and so many people have talked. You know, when you take a look, here's a defense that's, you know, led the nation in so many categories, and yet they were given very little chance against what some people think is the best team that's ever played. So, his own number, quarterback draw, three steps back and the quick shoot up the middle. He's down inside the 15-yard line. Coach Osborne sends in the plays. Got to be taking a look at that clock, which now is down to 8.35 and running. They've used it very, very well. Remember when a team picks up a first down, it automatically stops the clock until the chains are moved. So you can pick up some time that way. There's loads of time. call signals very intense crowd looks like Turner Gill might have fallen out of John and if he did he could have been enough for a first down we'll see where they spot the ball he's got it and it looks to be a first down Dr. Tom Osborne. Well, I know this, that if they don't give it to him, I'd have it checked because it looks like it's close enough. It doesn't look like it is one, but it's within six or eight inches. Fourth down. Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier is out with an injured ankle. Nebraska without his best weapon. The pitch back to Jeff Smith. He turns the corner. He's got the first down from behind tackle. Drives him down to the five-yard line of Miami. And now Nebraska goes first and goal from the Hurricane 5. 7, 34 to play. Tell you what, Dean Steinkeeler, we, you sit there and so many times people will say, well, why do we always feature him? He features him the whole scene. They run behind him a lot. He's a great blocker. He pulls very well, and he makes contact at the point of attack. In a critical situation, he picks up a big first down, or he's responsible for it. It was a freshman, 255-pound Jerome Brown, 98, who made the knockdown. And now uh, Miami player is intended to. Looks like it could be a heat cramp. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl right after this. January 1st, beautiful skies of Hawaii. The 1984 Hula Bowl Classic, next Saturday on NBC Sports. Don Crickey with John Brody back at the Orange Bowl. This is what the two teams are playing for. It's nice, but the national championship, which is also on the line, is priceless. All right now, it's 7.33 to play. Miami has the lead, but Nebraska's challenging. Miami leading 31-17. Turner Gill turns up, turns in, gets down to the one. Seven fifteen to play the 
the clock running, Nebraska, after scoring early in the third quarter, after fumbling a Miami, recovering a Miami fumble to tie the game, has not scored since. As you see, the Hurricane defense holding Nebraska to 35 points below its season average. Huskers come in scoring like a basketball team. 52 points a game. Over the top, Jeff Smith is in for a touchdown. 6.55 to play, and the Huskers are right back in it. I don't think there's much doubt they'll go for the one-pointer here. Some people say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, what do we do? Do we go for the two-pointer or the one-pointer? I think psychologically it would be a defeat if you go for a two-pointer and don't make it. You see they're starting to move off at the line, of, at the point of attack. Their offensive line actually has all the action on the other side of the goal line. I think it would be a downer if they went for two and didn't make it right here, whereas if they kick, kick the point, they stay within seven and a chance to make two later. And without Mike Rozier. So Johnny Rogers on the sideline. They were asking, where is he? He's right here. <laughs> there is no overtime, as you know, in college football. The extra point by Livingston is up and good, and it's now a 31 to 24 game. Nebraska will kick off with 6.55 to play. 31-24 Miami with a seven-point lead now as Nebraska puts up its first touchdown of the second half on an over-the-top dive by tailback Jeff Smith. tie this game would they uh, get the next touchdown would they go for the tie and maybe get the national championship they could conclude unbeaten I think they definitely would if they did it soon enough but I think if it happened late in the ball game they'd go for the win and, and I think we'd have a chance to see whether Tom Osborne thought it was better to win the national championship or to win the Orange Bowl I know it would be a very unpopular decision if it happened late and they didn't take a shot to win it but uh, those are coaching decisions <laughs> I can remember a game several years ago where there was a 10 to 10 tie between a couple of nationally ranked teams and it didn't settle well with the fans at all in Notre Dame, did it? People forget though, Michigan State punted after Notre Dame did. Yeah, he's, that man seemed to survive quite well. A high spinning kick down to Keith Griffin. He's got a problem. Look at those Huskers come down. Oh, these guys are playing like champions now. 6.49 to play. Miami has the ball. John, of course, a moment ago referring to the 1966 game between the two unbeatens. Notre Dame and Michigan State ended in a 10-10 tie, and the Irish won the national championship. And it was for the same reason that they went for the tie. So, you know, if people make such a, such a, a large issue of who wins the national championship, and people have done so, uh, which is most important? It's a pretty large issue, bro. Right. Kosar would like to have access to what this camera does. He'd like to see number 87 coming around. <laughs> you know, Bill Weber hitting him in the back just as he lets go of the ball. It'd be a whole lot easier to play that position if he could. That was the NBC remote camera up on the goalpost. Eddie Brown with his fifth reception. He got Miami out of jail for the moment. It's second down and four right now. Miami leading. 31 to 24 with 641 to play. Keith Griffin puts his head raised in Miami. A lot warmer on the field underneath those shoulder pads and helmets. Light it up, signaling the new year. That's a little mock-up of a man that's injured, I guess. see what Bernie Kosar does here. I think you, there's a good chance you'll see him throw a pass in the third and two right here. A little short one. Nebraska blitzing. Bernie throws. He's got Keith Griffin. He's got a first down. McCashlin and Brett Clark knocked him down, but the 
money throw from freshman Bernie Kosar <laughs> to senior Keith Griffin. Gets a first down for Miami, and you see the clock 5.51 to play. And I tell you, he had Keith Griffin so far open, he threw that thing like a shot foot. That baby was not going to get anywhere but to old Keith. Good play at a critical time. Good call. Old Keith is all business, too, isn't he, when he gets it? For that earlier fumble, he's made some big, big plays all night long for Miami. Got away from the Buckeyes, did Keith Griffin. Left Columbus to come to Miami. First and ten, Hurricanes. Keith Griffin, he's popped by Mike Knox, that tough inside linebacker who broke five helmets already this season. How'd he break them? While they were on his head? Or? <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. He didn't drop them after practice. <laughs> All right. Mike Knox, outstanding linebacker. So he broke them. Gets in good position. 6'3", 235, Mike Knox from Castle Rock, Colorado. Butkus type. They don't like to be around him in practice. He doesn't know when it's the real thing or not. He knows, but he likes to go full speed all times. Knox, second down and nine now, Miami. Hurricanes lead by seven. 4.40 to play. In the flat, it goes to Eddie Brown, and he dives ahead. Breaks it open. Look at this play. That's just fabulous athletic ability. 41 yards. Down, but there aren't many people that continually come up with the needed play at the needed time. Kosar's one, and number 40, Eddie Brown. He's the fellow that got them back in the ball game against Florida State, gave him a chance to kick a field goal late, win the ball game. Beautiful play, breaking those two tackles. Boy, it was a tremendous play. 31-24, Miami and White with the lead. Star has set an orange ball record for passing yardage, 300 yards for the freshman. Live action, Albert Bentley. He's been quiet for a while, but not now. Oh! That was a touchdown. If he keeps his feet, he made so many good moves to get in the open. It was very difficult to keep his balance, but what a great play. There's another man, number 16. Their offensive personnel has really outplayed Nebraska tonight. Number 20, 16, 44, 40, you name them. Number 6, Stanley Shakespeare, early in the ballgame. All of their, what you call, skilled positions have had great nights. Albert Bentley with the big run, as you point out, John, he was gone and they able to hold his footing. He did get up first down. holds up there's going to be some party in Miami well you know it's it's funny no matter how the much you hear will be up late. <laughs> no matter how much you hear and how much enthusiasm the city of Miami had all the smart people said hey yeah but they're playing against Nebraska now who did they beat uh, they beat some good teams I'll tell you East Carolina and Florida State at the end of the year were playing exceptional football anybody that saw them play in a bowl game knows and these guys have come to play Again, they pick it up, Keith Griffin. Go to the draw play, and Keith Griffin is ahead and a first down carry down to the 26-yard line. You know, by design, when you're blitzing against a draw play, you should stop it for a loss. But if, the, if just a small crack opens and the offensive linemen use good technique, they can break something for the back, and he can pick up good yardage. That's what happened. Kosar read the blitz, gave the linemen a chance to see their blocks, and look at the crack they created. Beautiful play. Bentley, number 16, was in there at the point of attack. Juan Comandiero, the Cuban-born guard, had the big seal block to open the draw. It's second down and along four. Keith Griffin runs, and the Cornhuskers, Rob Stuckey, rides him down. Top-ranked and unbeaten Cornhuskers, who at the moment trail Miami, 31-24. to 24. And if they get one more timeout, it's going to force Nebraska to take their timeouts before they get possession of the ball. This is a very big play. Now, if they can move the ball about three yards, they'll be able to kick a 40-yard field goal, and this, this ball game would be history. So I expect them to probably either throw a short out or try to run the ball about three yards. Let's see. It's third down and a long three. 
Keith Griffin, nothing there, and the Cornhuskers shut it down. It brings up fourth down. And the game clock continues to tick. 153, 52. Now they stop it. One of Coach Schnellenberger's sons. The other one's on the team. Sue Schnellenberger, important part of it. 153 to go in Miami's quest for a national championship. Underdog, our leading top ranked and unbeaten Nebraska, 31 to 24. Bernie Kosar's right arm has been a key. The freshman from Boardman, Ohio. And another very, very difficult factor that's mitigated against the Cornhuskers is the injury to their great runner, Mike Rogier, the Heisman Trophy winner out with an injured ankle. Went out in the second half. Fourth down now. Here's the field goal attempt. Jeff Smith drills it. Didn't get there. Nebraska will get the ball with 147 to play. John, we're going down to the final gun, it looks like, on this one. And you can see some, some coaches uh, are very quiet and passive. Others get their group ready. And this man has been an inspirational force for this group all year long. He's not about to take a back seat right now. One minute and 47 seconds between the Miami Hurricanes Wide left, and it's no good, and so the Cornhuskers get back the ball with 1.47 to go, and the unbeaten Nebraska team trailing by seven. Irving Fryer! Rod Bellinger saved a touchdown. Finally, Fryer, who's been dormant, explodes for 29 yards very nearly exploding for the distance. What a beautiful throw. Oh. Now that, that was a play in which he only took three steps back. It's the first pass in this half on first down. And that is uh, a very effective decision itself. 29 yards at used six seconds. He's covering some ground. A lot of timeouts left. A lot of time. There's no hurry uh, either way, but I think this man is left it all out there. Rodney Bellinger, number four, has done a phenomenal job on Irving Fryer. Played him one-on-one -on -one throughout most of the evening. Stopped a lot of in sweeps. Let's take a look here. Just a little three-step drop. He catches Fryer in between the zone, and we're back on the, on the field. Live action, first and ten. Gill gets it away on the run. Shane Swanson goes up in the air, but came down. Goes 128 to play. Jack Fernandez made another good play, forcing uh, Turner Gill to throw the ball a little before he won it. Nebraska, unbeaten, the dominant team in college football this year with a 52-point-a-game scoring average, trying to come back without the Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Rozier, sideline with an injured ankle. Here's a throw, and down with the ball is Ricky Simmons. It's a good catch, and the Huskers have it down to the 26-yard line of Miami, a 19-yard game. Beautiful pattern. That was perfectly timed and a beautiful pattern. They can throw that ball from a drop back, and people have talked about for what Nebraska does. Turner, Turner Gill is, is a great quarterback. I think he could be an exceptional T-formation pro-style quarterback. It's just that he can adapt to any style. Ricky Simmons, way wide now, and here's a give up the middle, and this time the Hurricanes defense is there to shut down Jeff Smith as the clock runs. 1.13 to go. And now Nebraska signals for and is allotted a timeout. And then, of course, theoretically looking at a possible Nebraska score, John, if they go in, they have the option of going for the win with a two-point conversion. The much higher percentage kicked extra point would mean a tie game. They'd still finish the season unbeaten. And would they be crowned down? In all the probability they would be. But we don't know. We don't vote. You know, that's a decision for Tom Osborne to make. It's, it's obvious if he goes for a two-pointer, the only way he can come out on top is go for a two-pointer and make it. Because then there can't be any second guessing. A two-pointer and miss, they say, hey, why don't you go for the national championship? A one-pointer and tie, why don't you go for the win? So he's in a no-win situation if they pick up the next 25 yards. But hey, that's no gimme. They're playing against the toughest team in the country in the last quarter of football. This group's only given up 10 points all year long. Tom Osborne, a 
doctor of educational psychology, Ph.D. He can stay under control, and so can Coach Dillenberger. Second down and eight. One twelve to play. Turner Gill with a sky eight pass. Irving Fryer. He dropped the ball. The best receiver in the country, but even the great ones have a lapse. And well, Fryers came at a most inopportune time. Irving Fryer has not been a big factor tonight. He's got a chance, as the great ones always do, to make the catch to put them back in the ball game, and he dropped the gimme. Steinkohler picks it up. We'll see if it's a fumble. Apparently they're ruling his arm was in motion, were they not, John? Pretty tough to tell. We can a play they'll never forget if Nebraska doesn't go in. Now I don't, I don't know if this man has ever dropped a ball, and they've never been in this kind of situation before. But to be regarded as one of the top five players in college football, you couldn't have ever dropped a, a ball in a situation like that. And I don't think there's any more to say because nobody could feel worse. He's just hoping to get another chance. That's it. And now it could be his very last one because the Cornhuskers have fourth down coming up. Fourth down and eight. The ball at the 24-yard line of Miami. One last look. The earlier play, Irving Fryer with the goal line sprint. A perfectly thrown ball from Gill, but it's dropped. He split the defenders and was wide open was Irving Fryer. Then in his heartbreak, he collapses to the ground. And now, fourth down is coming up for Nebraska. The Cornhuskers with the longest winning streak in major college football. They've won 22 straight games, 12-0 this season, ranked number one all year. But they're down by seven. Let's see how it comes out. Go 
Tower Schnellenberger. His heartbeat's got to be 180. He knows this case is not closed. Mark, <laughs> Mark Tressman is down there saying, look, coach, if we recover the ball, we do not have to run a play to run out the clock. They've got two timeouts. That won't be enough. We'll be able to end this thing and go in a winner. But they must get the onside kick. thought they had some timeouts and they don't. What a football game in the golden anniversary year. Steve Lynch, the Orange Bowl president. All the people on the Orange Bowl committee had hoped for a great game. There was speculation. Miami would be blown out. Everybody here had faith in Pat Osborne. Showed his dignity and his courage going for the win. The Huskers didn't get it though. What's the greatest game you ever were at or saw? This is it for me. And this, <laughs> this is about as fine a football game as has ever been played and happens to be for the national championship. That man has done it all. Set it to music. This is Hurricane Warren, number one in Miami. They say the wind is picking up. I heard it just this morning. The flag will be raised because it's a full-blown hurricane warning. They're lining in formation. All shining orange and green. Busting butt on their own turf. There's nothing they ain't seen. You just look out in Nebraska. Better hold on to your corn. Because the hurricane is coming. It's looking like a storm. Block them. You can do it now. Knock them to the ground. Drag them to the red zone and kick their butts around. for hurricane warning and now the final 46 seconds of this game a game that'll be replayed emotionally by these players and their fans throughout the years a hallmark game in college football a great demonstration of courage by nebraska going for the win and for miami an absolutely miracle year the dream season as they come back from a bad loss opening day to go to 11 straight wins in an all probability when the votes are in ever national championship for the hurricane and i'd like to say that the coaching staff the players themselves felt they were going to win tonight they were not they were not in awe of, of nebraska now most, many of the fans were most of the writers were i think anybody who had seen nebraska play was but these guys did it because they knew they could i'll tell you right now school's out this place is up for grabs He had it. He, he was.
were saying very softly all week long, I think we can win. We've got the people to win. We can't afford to make mistakes. We can't afford to keep get anybody hurt. But I'll tell you, if we all hang in there, I feel we can do it. He's been letting his team know they've been preparing for six weeks, and they did it. That's a wonderful feat against a great team. It was, and the confidence you talked about, John, really was evident all week long. It, even when he went to scout Nebraska at the Oklahoma game, Snellenberger says they're going to be the best team we'll face all year, but they can be beaten. We can't make mistakes if we're going to do it, but we can win, and they did. And it was an offense that came out from the gun, throwing the ball around. They knew they had to put some points on the board early, get a lead, hang in there. They did that. Then comes Nebraska back, and they did it again. I mean, that, I, you know, when everybody said, oh, boy, they'll make it close anyway, now they open up another 14-point lead. That man right there, Dennison, catches two touchdowns. And here is the critical play of the game. Nebraska goes for two. The play is broken up at the goal line. And the Huskers, in their valiant effort to win the game rather than go for the tie, come up empty. And ultimately now, the victory and possibly, quite more than possibly, the national championship going to the University of Miami. There are two polls, of course, the coaches' poll and the writers' poll. We'll be back to the 50th Orange Bowl in a moment. But right now, it's Miami, a 31-30 victor. Let's go to Len Berman in New York. Len? Thank you, Don Cricky. What a day it's been around the country on Bowl Day 84. And really, when you think about it, number one, number two, and number five all lost today. So the big day for upsets. Who will be number one? We'll figure it out in a few minutes, perhaps. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the highlights from around the country today. First up, the Fiesta Bowl right here on NBC Sports. The View in Tempe, Arizona, as Pittsburgh thought they may have had a late fourth quarter win with the snuffy Everett field goal. But Ohio State showed some class coming back over the years they've been a running team here they win it with a touchdown pass with just 39 seconds to go tom zack to jemison and they win it 28 to 23 on to the cotton bowl the dogs did it they trailed 9 straight and number two unbeaten texas but texas fumbled this punt late in the fourth quarter gary moss recovered it for georgia so then georgia they took it in from 17 yards away their quarterback john lastinger did it so number two unbeaten Texas loses to Georgia, 10 to nine. In the Rose Bowl today here on NBC, all Bruins, the Pac-10 continues to do it to the Big Ten. Number five Illinois goes down to defeat 45 to nine at the hands of Rick Neuheisel. This 15 yard pass to Carl Durrell was one of four. That tied a Rose Bowl record. So when you think about the last 15 Rose Bowls, the Pac-10 has won 13 of them. Then the Sugar Bowl tonight, Auburn fans feel perhaps they should get a few votes for number one. They knocked off Michigan by a score of 9-7, to seven, although they did not score a touchdown today. They did it all with field goals. Bo Schembechler and Michigan, well, they had the lead throughout the game. This was the only touchdown. Steve Smith, four-yard rollout, 7-0 Michigan. But the uh, Auburn uh, defense really did a job on Michigan here. Four turnovers. Now... Here we go, Al Del Greco, 19-yard field goal, third of the game with 23 seconds remaining. Auburn wins it 9-7. to seven. Their fans say, give us a couple of votes for number one. Now, the game you just saw, one of the great collegiate bowl games in history, perhaps the top Orange Bowl in their 50-year history. Miami knocks off powerful Nebraska as Howard Schnellenberger and company do it. They took a 17-0 lead. Bernie Kosar, two-yard touchdown pass to Glenn Dennison. That was the first of the touchdown plays. Then the trick play. Here's how Nebraska got on the board. The snap that they fumbled on purpose. The guard, Dean Steinkuehler, picked it up, ran 19 yards for the touchdown, and Nebraska finally scored and trailed 17-7. Now second half action. Albert Bentley, seven yards away. He takes it in. Miami now leads it 31-17. Critical play here. Mike Regier is hurt. Leaves the game with an ankle injury. He finished with 147 yards. But Nebraska came back. Heartbreak here for Irving Fryer. Wide open, and he dropped it. But Nebraska got Fryer off the hook. Jeff Smith did it on a fourth and eight. Smith takes it all the way in for the touchdown, and Nebraska closes to within one at 31-30. The gutsy call going for two points. It's not to be. Miami wins it 31-30. So, who is the national champion? Is it Miami? 
Is it Auburn? Or is it Nebraska? All have just one loss. Nebraska's gutsy call may have lost them the game going for two points, but it may have won them some votes. We'll find out 6.30 tomorrow night. Len Berman in New York, back to the Orange Bowl now. Thank you, Len. 31 to 30, the final score, Miami the victor, and now let's go down to the Miami locker room to Bill McAtee. Bill? Okay, thank you very much, Don Kirky. Bernie Kozar, I think somebody forgot to tell you you were a freshman. You hung in there, showed a lot of poise. Your line did a terrific job. I'd say today, the offensive line, they've been, they really haven't been getting much credit all season. And uh, there's the guys like right there, Ian St. Clair, Paul Berticelli, my roommate, Alvin Ward, you know, all of Dave Heffernan and Juan Carmen. That's a heck of a group. That's the, those guys, they, they said they give their life for me, and I think they just about did today. I know Nebraska plays a lot of man, and it, there was no doubt that you felt you could throw on them. Yeah, we went into the game thinking that, uh, you know, we were going to be able to throw the ball. We tried to, uh, you know, we tried to mix it up early, and I think we did in the first quarter, but the... Uh, well, but the in the second quarter we kind of got out of our game plan, kind of start throwing the ball too much. But uh, you know we got back into it the third quarter and were able to move the ball. You had a couple of new plays in there. I know one of the touchdown passes to Dennison was new. Yeah, they, uh, I think the second touch, the second touchdown we had today was that uh, it was called 51 middle as a new play and uh, it worked well. 